watching our representatives who had claimed to be for smaller government and lower taxes and so on and so forth, you know, repeating their Republican mantra for so long, it was watching them come out and blatantly and openly vote for socialism. It was, it was investigating that vote and realizing that a vote for socialism is a vote for slavery. And that is what really motivated me to stand up and say, hey, I can't just watch this anymore. I can't just be an activist and watch these guys do this and let them get away with it. And, uh, and apparently, a lot of other Americans are feeling the same way, whether they're running for office or not, or whether they're joining a, a 9-12 group or a, going to a Tea Party. It's, you know, a lot of folks say, well, you know, a, a lot of folks are wondering how long that's going to last, how much impetuous is going to have behind it. But, you know, folks, we are seeing the body politic wake up for the first time since 1775, and it's happening right in front of us. Well, I have to agree with you there. A lot of people are waking up, and when you refer to socialism, I would imagine that you're referring to this GIVE Act that passed, H.R. 1388, I believe it was. And really, the programs in this are just unbelievable. Um, mandatory national service. People, uh, basically, children from 12 to 18 are going to have to do this service. Then you're going to be forced into a secondary school, apparently. Uh, dropping out of high school is no longer going to be an option. If you do go to college, you're still going to have to be a part of this program. And they're really ready for a full push of this National Service Corps come this 9-11, which is going to be the National Service Corps Day of Remembrance, where they're going to be doing knock and talks with people. People who haven't joined the program yet to get more people antiquated to this system it's just disgusting that's exactly what I'm talking about that that give act I love how they name these things the opposite of what they are it's actually a take act but they want to call it a give act to make it sound better I guess but yeah that's exactly it. it's it's rank involuntary servitude and the 13th amendment of the United States Constitution strictly forbids involuntary servitude it's not allowed mm -hmm. so but but they keep getting away with it or at least they think they are but Folks like myself are standing up, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, there's a lot of others, people that are coming out and saying, all right, enough's enough. We don't care. We're grassroots candidates. Everybody's trying to tell us that we can't win, but I think that they're mistaken. I think we're going to show them different. And, you know, absolutely bringing up Ron Paul is a great example because that first MIAC report that we broke right here at Prison Planet and Infowars.com targeted not only Ron Paul, but his organization Campaign for Liberty. And, you know, we just reported today that a man in Louisiana was detained, detained for having a Don't Tread on Me bumper sticker on his car. On the other side, I want to get RJ's take on this latest DHS document, the Lexicon document, which is even broader in scope and really going after everybody. On top of that, we're going to see how we can help him get elected to Congress in Oklahoma. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis. PrisonPlanet.tv Infowars.com All right, folks, we are back. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis. We are joined by R.J. Harris, who is running for the 4th District Congressional seat in Oklahoma. And I want to get your take on this latest lexicon document that is leaked into the press. Now, it's dated March 26th. It leaked uh, pretty much a week and a half ago. We started to report on it. The mainstream media just started reporting on it a couple days ago. The Washington Times wrote about, you know, the actual extremism that it covers, you know, the racist groups, the Aryan groups, the black separatist groups. And then they talked about the goofy stuff like Odin worship and all this other nonsense. What they don't want to talk about is the demonization of the alternative media, of people who are anti-illegal immigration. It literally says that you are maybe an extremist terrorist and coerce with terrorism or, or try to pull off terrorism on the border of Mexico if you're against people having illegal driver's licenses, Medicaid, uh, public assistance. It's insanity. Hacktivism is mentioned in this. Anti-technology is mentioned in this. The only person that's really given it a fair shake is Lou Dobbs, and I wanted to get your take on this latest DHS document. My response to this, Jason, is wake up, America. It's time to fight for liberty. With this document and others like it, this is the federal government pulling out all the stops. They are, are, are launching their offensive with that. They're going to try to demonize anybody that doesn't dis or excuse me anybody that disagrees with them and call them terrorists. You know, imagine calling the founders terrorists who are out there trying to fight for liberty, individual liberty, states' rights. Okay, these these are principles that our entire uh, country is is built on. 
and they're going to try to call people that stand up for that, uh, extremists and terrorists and so forth, just because we don't... I mean, think about how much our, our founders railed against any kind of government, um, especially any kind of big government. They talked about how, you know, it's got to be kept chained down, it's got to be kept bottled up, um, you cannot trust the government, so on and so forth. Well, saying things like that makes, makes us terrorists, according to these documents. And all we're doing is repeating the exact words of Thomas Jefferson and, and, and George Washington and John Adams and Samuel Adams. Yeah, and on top of that, you know, the Patriot Movement, again, is very much so targeted in that manner. They say, oh, they try to say that they're behind people like Thomas Jefferson. They say they're behind the Constitution and Bill of Rights, but what they really are are dirty terrorists. And then we're going to have this national level exercise 09 coming up at the end of July, moving into the beginning of August. Now, this is going to take place with the United Kingdom, Mexico, Canada, and Australia. It's a FEMA-run exercise, quote-unquote, prevent terrorism with DH oversight in FEMA Region 6, and this is going to be a mass spying drill on the American people. They say they're going to use the private sector, the public sector, makeshift buildings. Um, they're going to, I mean, I just can't get over that people can't wake up and, and, and have them see this is about globalism. This is about them taking our sovereignty away. In fact, the sovereignty movement is mentioned in this latest DHS document. I mean, we need more people like yourself, not only to run, but to get elected. How can we help you get elected to Congress in Oklahoma? Well, the number one thing is for the listeners out there to recognize that as a candidate, I am a Republican, and I'm challenging the establishment. I am challenging a Republican incumbent that voted for the bailouts. Obviously, that establishment is not going to give us any money. They're not going to give us any time on, the, on their website. So, you know, if folks want to help not, not just one candidate from the 4th District of, of Oklahoma to get elected, but success for this movement is to raise an army of constitutional conservative candidates to march on Washington and take our Congress back. And that's going to take some funding. That's going to take some volunteer support. So, you know, I would encourage folks that if they're excited about what they hear from people like myself and Rand Paul and others that are talking, that I'm not talking about it, I'm actually doing it, but others that are coming out and announcing their candidacy to challenge this government, this out-of-control government, you know, go to, go to a website for a, congr a constitutional conservative candidate and make a donation. Or, or, or if, you know, if, the, if you're being hit particularly hard by this recession, maybe just volunteer to, to wallpaper the Internet with our, you know, with our blogs and just help us out, get the word out on the Internet. That's what folks can do right now from home, wherever they are, and get behind this liberty movement and try to fight for our, for our freedom again. You know, it's interesting. Um, uh, Lindsey Graham. Mm -hmm. John McCain's right-hand man during the last uh, presidential election had to come out the other day and felt like he had to say, hey, Ron Paul is not the leader of the Republican Party. Well, excuse me. The fact that he has to come out and say that, what does that tell you? Ron Paul is the only Republican up at, up at Congress right now that's doing anything of value. He's got his, he's got his uh, a bill up there to audit the Fed, and you, get, you can bet he's got folks running scared on that. And in the meantime, what do they do? These same people that are doing the, you know, the Lexicon document that you just mentioned a while ago, they're detaining his staffers at, at the St. Louis airport, right? Did you see that? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, you know, they but detained one of his staffers. They had it on uh, Judge Napolitano's show here, two, uh, what was it, a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Really? Because he, because he had, had too much cash on it. Oh, I, you know what? We, we did. We played that on the air. And basically he was asked, all the man was asking is if I'm lawfully required to answer the question of where this money came from. And some wise-ass security guard just said, all right, you want to do it the hard way? And then when he did answer the question, when they instruct, when a law enforcement officer said, yes, you have to answer me, he told them where he got it from. And then they're like, I don't know if we're ready to let you go yet. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's crazy. And, and, and what's, a, what's beautiful is this, this awaking movement, these people that showed up, and went to these tea parties a couple weeks ago. These people that are going out, getting online, watching, uh, listening to you for the first time, listening to Alex for the first time, you know, looking for alternative sources of media because they're realizing that they're being lied to. And, and, and this is happening all over America. It's really exciting time. It's, it's it is an exciting, exciting time, time to also, live in. You know, you know, it can be a little bit nerve-wracking, but folks, this is the time to take our country back. We have an opportunity. We have a window of opportunity here in the 2010 and the 2012 elections. 
mm-hmm. to get some constitutional conservatives elected to try to uncover. And once we can take this, contra- uh, this Congress back, Jason, we can start uncovering these rocks. We can start turning these rocks over. We can start finding out who's been doing what and when. Until then, we're kind of really just, you know, spitting into the wind. But we take that Congress back, we can start getting some answers, some answers for things that you have been talking about on your radio program for years that Alex has been talking about. Wouldn't that be nice? No, it would be excellent. Take our government back and put it back in the genie bottle where it belongs and start getting some answers.